Welcome to another how-to video from Bugspray.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about invisible bugs. Now, there's no real insect or pest or bug that's called invisible, but we often get calls or emails from customers who have a problem. They're either feeling something, they might be getting some kind of bites, there might be some type of a rash on their skin, others describe sensations, or they might be actually seeing something, maybe a pest flying around their eyes or nose. Sometimes there's something that's landing on them, but when they go to capture one of these insects, they get away. So oftentimes, the caller, our customer, is confused. They don't know what they have. They're unsure how they can go about doing an application or how they can proceed. Well, the purpose of this video is real simple. We're going to establish a couple of premises that will allow you to do a treatment regardless of what you might have. First and foremost, all insects come from outside structures. You either bring them in with something that you brought home from the grocer. Maybe your pet goes outside and they get some fleas on them or possibly some noceums in the fur. They come into the home. They bring the insects inside. You personally can bring home some pests. And then, of course, these can get established inside the home. Once in the home, they can get into carpeting, furniture, in some cases, they can live in potted plants, maybe down a drain. There's a wide range of areas in the home where insects can thrive. But in some of these cases that we have from callers and customers, the exact source is not known and the exact insect is not known. Let's point out there are many different types of pests that can contribute to what we call the invisible bug problem. A good example would be something like a flea or possibly a dust mite. Dust mites clearly are very small, they're microscopic, so one might call them invisible, but they thrive in carpets and bedding, and from there can get onto people's skin and cause all kinds of irritation. Fleas will typically come from uh, carpeting someplace where a pet has been active, and then when they are ready to bite and get a blood meal, they will hatch, jump on a person, get a bite, and then leave that person. So they don't readily stay on the individual. And let's also point out that many people don't have allergic reactions right away. So oftentimes you can get bit by insects and not even know that anything is happening because it takes a day or two for the reaction to occur. In other situations, people can feel something landing. And a good example of that might come from, say, a fungus fly or a, a forid fly, maybe noceums. These are very small insects, all of which are drawn to things like CO2, which would be our exhale. So these types of insects might come around our nose or eyes, maybe our mouth. And then of course, biting pests that are seeking blood, such as mosquitoes and midges, they're targeting infrared or heat that mammals give off. But something like a thrip, which is commonly landing on people to extract moisture, maybe sweat, maybe some saline, uh, biting midges, for example. These are fast flyers. They can land, they can cause irritation and leave without you ever seeing them. So once again, the exact culprit can be very confusing and people get stumped. They're always wondering, what can this be? Another thing we hear from our callers and customers is that oftentimes there's only one individual in the home that's being targeted and they always feel isolated or uh, being singled out and everyone else doesn't seem to be having any of these problems. The reality is that this is pretty common and a good example of this would be something like the wildebeest herds that roam in the Serengeti and how they are attacked by lions and cheetahs and very uh, a range of, of predatory animals that will feast on one or two individuals from a herd. In other words, they see 
one or two individuals. They don't see the whole herd. They're always targeting one or two, and there's a very specific reason for that. It could be odor. It could be that the individual is showing itself as being weak. Whatever the case might be, they're not going after all the animals. And the same is true with these insects when they get into a house. They will not target everyone. In some cases, everyone might be vulnerable, but in the vast majority of the problems that we help customers with, there's only one individual that's having an issue, and it's usually in one area of the home, but it could be all areas. So as stated earlier, the point of this video is to help give you a game plan on how you can treat a problem when you don't even know what the pest might be. So how can that be? Well, we're going to establish a couple of premises. And the first premise is that all pests are either crawling pests or flying pests. If they're a crawling pest, they're going to be on carpets, they're going to be on furniture, they're going to be at ground level, although they can go up the walls and on the ceiling as well. But flying pests typically can occupy the air. So the treatments for these two types of problems are vastly different. If we're treating for a crawling pest, we need to treat carpets, we need to treat baseboards, and sometimes up the walls. If we're treating for something that flies, we have to treat the air in the room. This is very important, so we use what's called space sprays. In almost all cases, the use of liquids are not going to be a good place to start or a good way to start because liquids are very, very isolated. At most, you can treat one or two percent of a structure with a liquid treatment. But if you're using an aerosol, you can pretty much treat everything. So the blanketing effect of the aerosol is more thorough and it allows you to eliminate any type of area that these pests might be active without going crazy. In other words, it doesn't take a lot of time or effort or cost and you can quickly do a couple of treatments to see what you might have. And again, it won't even matter because the pest is either a crawling insect or a flying insect. And if you use one product, just one product like this multi-purpose insect killer, you can literally treat all these areas. So let's say, for example, that you have a problem in a office or maybe the basement, and it's an isolated small area, and you're not sure if the pest is coming from the carpeting or if it's something that's flying around in this room. This aerosol can treat up to a thousand square feet. It has a light cedar odor. So if you were to do an application, you would simply remove the cover there and then just lightly mist it out. You can spray this on fabric like furniture. You can apply it to carpeting and it would take you approximately three to five seconds to treat the entire room if you were treating the air. So for space spraying, if you had a room that was, say, 10 feet by 10 feet and 8 to 10 feet high, you would spray this in the middle of the room for 3 to 5 seconds, and then you would re remove yourself from the room so that the treatment can float around and remain active, killing off anything that might be flying. If you're treating carpeting and you had a 10 by 10 area, which is 100 square feet, it would take approximately 30 seconds of spray that you're going to be distributing over the carpeting. And then again, you're going to remove yourself from the room so that the treatment can settle and dry and it will quickly kill what's in there. This one product alone is all you need to use if you're unsure of what type of pest you have. In other words, if you don't know if it's a crawling pest and you don't know if it's a flying pest, you just know something's there, use this on the ground for carpets and furniture and then use it as a space spray and you will be eliminating everything that could potentially be. Now what if the structure is large and you have a problem throughout the entire structure and using an aerosol like this is not going to be so practical because it would require a lot of cans. Let's say the house is 2,500 square feet. Using a couple or three cans every time you have to treat would be time consuming and not cost effective. This is where an aerosol machine can become really handy. An aerosol machine is basically an automatic device and it works by adding a couple of batteries to it and then having it programmed, or I should say, uh, turned on so that it will work automatically. And in this case, I have the Aerosol 1000 machine. It takes 
to desal batteries and once the batteries are added and you have a can of clear zone inside here all you have to do is turn the unit on it will blink a couple of times and that little mechanism will go off and from here on out this will release a half second blast of the clear zone every 15 minutes this machine can be fitted with one can of the clear zone left on and set up on any type of a counter or wall unit you can even hang it on the side of a of a wall or a door or something and just have it running continuously to kill anything that might be in the air so the clear zone would take the place of having to spray the multi-purpose insect killer all the time in the air. Just let this run around the clock. The clear zone is a pyrethrin based material so it evaporates quickly after five or ten minutes the treatment is gone and this is why you need this constantly releasing a new blast every 15 minutes. Now when I say blast it's not a lot. You're not going to see anything come out. It's basically invisible. It's odorless and it only lasts for five or ten minutes but it will kill anything that's flying around so if you have forest flies fungus flies if you have no seams biting flies mosquitoes it doesn't matter this is going to handle anything that might be in the air that was or is the pest that's been causing the problems going back to the ground what's the alternate option for treating carpets and furniture if you don't want to use the aerosol the bithor would be the next step up now this is a liquid however it's odorless you would mix one ounce of that with a gallon of water and then using a pump sprayer you can distribute that over carpeting and furniture and it will provide long-term control for anything that might be coming from the carpet such as fleas or dust mites uh, maybe oak itch mites all of these pests can be controlled with the bithor on the ground we would still recommend using the space spray assuming that you think you have something in the air if you're 100 percent sure that the pest is coming from the carpet or the furniture the multi-purpose insect killer is all you need if it's a small area again if you're treating a large area go with the bithor side note regarding the safety on these machines and these products the multi-purpose insect killer is water-based it is actually labeled for use directly on dogs for fleas and ticks and lice so you can use it directly on dogs obviously you can treat your carpets and furniture with it and when treating the air give yourself 15 minutes to 30 minutes of letting the treatment settle and then you can go back into the room and use the room with the bithor treatments will be different it's a liquid when you mix one ounce of the bithor to a gallon of water you'll get about a thousand square feet of coverage on carpeting and baseboards and those treatments should be renewed once or twice a month the residual on that is way longer compared to the multi-purpose insect killer and regarding the frequency this can be used pretty much as often as needed so if you had a treatment done on a Sunday and you were good for several days but then Thursday or Friday were experiencing more of a problem retreat the rule is simple if they're coming back you need to break the cycle of the pest and since we're not sure of what the pest is we're not sure of what that life cycle might be and a good example of this would be comparing mosquitoes to noceums mosquitoes take 7 to 14 days to develop and if you do a good treatment you may not see anything for a week or so if you have noceums that are rebounding they will come back daily a noceum's life is basically 24 hours so if you do a treatment in the afternoon and kill everything that's there you'll be fine for the rest of that day but the following day assuming that they're reproducing in the home or maybe adjacent to the home they can then get into the house and be active the following day so you may have to treat daily for a period of time to break that cycle and ultimately as indicated earlier if the pest is coming in from the outside uh, for example no seams you will and should get outside and do treatments out there using something that we have listed in our no seam article because if you're not controlling them immediately adjacent to the home and that's the source of where they're coming from to get inside the home you will just continuously get infested and have activity 
and it will be never ending. So in a case where they're coming from the outside, getting out there and doing some treatments will offer a lot of relief. Uh, the Bythor is great for the noceums around the structure, and our article on noceums details that, how you can use bogging machines to do the applications, and it's very, very thorough. But for the purpose of this video, we're focusing more of inside the structure. And for those cases, once again, small areas, the multi-purpose insect killer for the carpeting and the air space. If you're having to treat the entire structure, installing the machines is more automated because it's gonna go on and run on a continuous basis without you having to manually control the treatments. And then of course, if you have a lot of carpeting and areas to treat, the Bythor would be the best value because from this jug, you're gonna get 32 gallons of finished spray. So it will last a long time and you won't have to reapply it nearly as frequently as you would using just the multi-purpose insect killer. So in summary, no matter what your pest problem is, meaning if it's a crawling pest or a flying pest and it's isolated to a small area in the house, maybe around the TV in the TV room, maybe around computer stations, maybe in a bathroom, one or two rooms, the multi-purpose insect killer would be a great starting point. It allows you to treat the ground as well as the airspace and can grant you quick control because it's ready to spray. If the problem is uniform throughout the structure and you're needing to cover vast areas, you should consider stepping up to the aerosol machine with the clear zone to take care of the airspace. And then of course for the carpeting, go to the Bythor and it can be used safely on carpets and furniture for anything that might be coming from those areas. But these treatments will handle no matter what you have and what we would call an invisible bug when it's not identifiable because you're treating the ground for any crawling insects and you're treating the air for anything that might be flying. So there is no place that they can survive. So thank you for watching this how-to video from bugspray.com.